Hi, Mark Williams here. In this video, what I'm going to do is read and comment on Michael Singer's article, The Untethered Soul, 12-Step Guide to Spiritual Awakening. Michael Singer has been so incredibly influential in my life in, in terms of just helping me to think clearly about who I am and how to find more peace and joy in my life. So I'd like to share this with you and share my experience with these points as well. Quote from the article, Spirituality is meant to bring about harmony and peace, but the diversity of our philosophies, beliefs, concepts, and views about spiritual matters often leads to confusion or even conflict. The fact that the very act of seeking spiritual freedom causes notions of success and failure, and these notions serve only to bind us to our own self-judgments. Am I growing? Have I done anything wrong? Am I meditating enough? Truth is only complicated because we pass it through our habitual thought patterns. When we step back from ourselves, truth becomes simple. There are not many paths to freedom. There is only one. In the end, no matter what particular patterns of thought we have managed to build in our minds, freedom always means transcending these personal thought patterns. But how does one go about transcending the personal self and awakening to spiritual freedom? What is needed for this journey are succinct steps that are so universal that they can echo through the halls of any religion as well as support intellectual understanding. Falling is a universal roadmap to self-realization. And now he discusses the 12 points. Number one, realize that you're in there. You must first come to realize that you are in there. From deep inside you are experiencing this world, you are experiencing your physical body, your thoughts, and your emotions. You're conscious and you are experiencing what it is like to be human. And I'd just like to point out about this point, what he's clearly saying here is that we are the one who is aware of the thoughts and the emotions and the physical sensations. We are not those things. And so what is key is to notice that we are not those things and to get a separation from them so we can observe them, so we can be the witness consciousness, the witness to these various sensations going on within us. Okay, step two here. Realize that you are not okay in there. Look to see what's going on inside of you. If you want to understand why you've done everything you've ever done, if you want to see what's really going on, just observe your mind and emotions. Just experience your inner state. If you objectively look, you will see that you are never completely at peace. You will see that you are not okay in there. I'd just like to comment on this. One thing I found really helpful to understanding what's going on inside of me is to journal on a daily basis. I've created a rule for myself where I write at least one sentence a day in my journal, and, and I've been doing that for the last number of years now. It's extremely helpful to have that self-awareness. So to recap, we are experiencing this physical body, these thoughts and emotions, but we are the one who is aware of those things. And now we're saying, okay, now we're realizing that, hey, we're not okay in there. And now step three here, realize that you're always trying to be okay. At any point when you look at the state of your inner being, you will see that something is bothering you. You will then notice that this causes urges, drives, and impulses to do something about it. You will find yourself constantly trying to either get something or avoid something. All of this is done in an attempt to be okay. Step four, realize that your mind has taken on the job of figuring out how everything needs to be for you to be okay. If you watch, you'll see that your mind is always telling you what you should or should not do, what others should and should not do, and how things should and should not be. All of this is the mind's attempt to first create a conceptual model of what it would, what would make you okay and then try to get the outside world to match it. And my commentary on that would be, um, you know, no wonder, no wonder we're not okay if we're trying to get our, our human mind here, 
our ego to somehow turn reality to look exactly the way we want it to look and and everything to be exactly the way we need it to be in order for us to be happy. Obviously, reality does what it wants, and it rarely cooperates fully with our desires. And so a certain letting go needs to take place where we are accepting reality for what it is. Step five, realize that the process of defining how the outside needs to be is not going to make you okay. You must seriously look at this process of trying to be okay. You've been at it your entire life. You've just tried different things at different times. While it's true that sometimes you manage to make it better for short periods of time, you know that you've never even come close to reaching a state of permanent peace. Watch very closely how you react to the things your mind has preferences about. You will see that if your mind gets what it wants, you feel joy. If it doesn't get what it wants, you feel disturbance. Likewise, when your mind experiences what it doesn't want, you feel disturbance. And when it avoids what it doesn't want, you feel relief. You will never be okay playing this game because the world will never match the conceptual model your mind has made up. Eventually, you'll, ha you'll come to see that struggling to be okay does not work. At some point, you will try to find a different way to be okay in there. So true. Step six, learn to not participate in the mind's struggle to be okay. This step is about learning to sit in the witness, the part of you that notices the inner urges to be okay. You must become comfortable with sitting in there and not participating in those inner energies. You learn to relax in the midst of them. You come to see that there's a habitual process in which the moment you feel inner disturbance, you are drawn into something about it, into doing something about it. You must learn to sit inside and not participate in this process. If you truly understand that going outside to try to be okay inside doesn't work, then you'll be willing to sit inside and simply allow the disturbance to pass through. It is not difficult. If you can do this, all disturbance will cease by itself. I would just like to comment on, on my own life in this regard here. I notice that when I don't resist feelings and I don't give them energy, then they tend to just come and go on their own. But when we're insistent that something has to be a particular way in order for us to be happy, then we're feeding it, we're giving it energy over and over again, and it never goes away. It's like if you, if you notice that something like anger is a very hard emotion to actually sustain. You have to keep fueling the fire up. it, keep reminding yourself why you're angry over and over again. But anger actually comes and goes relatively quickly when it is not fed with your conscious energy. Okay, number seven, learn to go about your life just like everyone else, except that nothing you do is for the purpose of trying to be okay. If you aren't so preoccupied with trying to be okay, you will be free to sit inside and quietly love, serve, and honor whatever naturally unfolds in front of you. When you reach this point, you are no longer living for yourself. You are interacting with life, but not for the purpose of being okay. And number eight, as you sincerely let go of the inner energies that you're watching, you begin to feel a deeper energy come in from behind. Up to this point, everything you were watching inside was in front of you. But now that you are no longer being drawn to those personal energies, you'll realize that your inner universe is actually very expansive. You'll begin to feel spirit flow in from behind. It lifts you and brings you such great love and joy. Ah, oh, that's so true in my life. I've experienced that many times. And it's just a beautiful thing to give all of your energy to the present moment and not focus so much on, I have to have this or I can't have that, but just to learn to just go with what happens. It just frees you up so much. You become so much more emotionally peaceful and stable. Okay, number eight. As you sincerely let go of the inner energies, you're like, oh, sorry. I uh, actually already did number eight. <laughs> Let's go to number nine. 
Your inner experience becomes so beautiful that you fall in love with the energy itself and you develop a very deep and personal relationship with it. It will become completely clear to you that there is an absolute trade-off between your personal energies and the amount of spirit that you feel. The more you get drawn into your personal energies, the less spirit you feel. The more you don't participate in your personal energies, the more spirit you feel. You now have a direct relationship with the spiritual energy and you'll find yourself constantly longing to experience it. Absolutely. Number 10, you begin to feel the energy pulling you up into it and your entire path becomes letting go of yourself in order to merge. Will is no longer needed. Now your path is strictly about releasing yourself into the pull of the higher energy. You must surrender deeply enough to be able to overcome the fear of losing your connection to the personal self. You must be willing to die to be reborn. 11. Once you get far enough back into the energy, you realize that your personal life can go on without you, leaving you free to become immersed in spirit. This is the greatest miracle. You've surrendered and your entire life is about spirit. Yet people, places, and things continue to interact with you. The difference is that these interactions require none of your energy. They happen naturally by themselves, leaving you at peace and absorbed by spirit. Number 12, now you are truly okay and nothing inside or outside of you can cause disturbance. You have come to peace with it all. Because you are now completely okay, you don't need anything. Things are just what they are. At this point, you know yourself as self. The world, mind, and heart cannot disturb you. You've transcended them all. What is more, instead of feeling drawn into spirit, you now actually experience yourself as spirit. You have no boundaries in time or space. You've always existed and you will always exist. You have no form, shape, gender, or body. You simply are, having always been and always will be, infinite spirit. That concludes his writing. It's so beautiful. Um, I think it's really critical that we give ourselves a lot of grace, a lot of compassion, and a lot of self-love, even as we read uh, these brilliant insights from Michael Singer here. So, for example, um, Numbers 10, 11, and 12, this talk about just being so immersed in spirit. For me, this, this has certainly been a gradual process, and it's also been the type of things where sometimes I intently feel exactly what he's talking about. And other times, I'm, I feel pulled away from it. And learning over time to use that feeling of being pulled away from it as a warning sign that, that something's off inside, that you're focused on the wrong things. And to take that as an opportunity not to beat yourself up about it, not to uh, belittle yourself for not being perfect or you know, falling into the same thing again, but rather just giving grace to be human and say, oh, I notice that I'm really, really wanting this thing to happen in my life so much that I'm basing my happiness on it. And to be able to take that realization and say, all right, let me go back to basics here. Let me let this go. Let me accept the present moment as it is. And then from there, find the clarity and then I can take action steps. Uh, none of this is saying that you can't take action steps to change your circumstances. That's perfectly fine. If you find yourself, I think, it was Eckhart Tolle that said, you know, if you find yourself stuck in the mud, well, obviously, get out of the mud. <laughs> uh, so uh, don't take any of this as complete passivity or something. But there's also many circumstances in life that we don't have direct control over and that we do need to accept. And when we accept the present moment, as opposed to being frustrated and resigned to it, when, when we handle it that way, we then get this beautiful clarity. And, and I think that's part of what he's talking about when you're connected with the universal spirit, God, however you want to phrase it, when we're connected with that ultimate reality, oh my goodness, our clarity of thought becomes so much better. We get so much intuition. We make such better decisions. 
So anyway, I hope this has been helpful for you. Please comment below. We'd love to hear what you think of this. Thank you so much. Peace.